Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from all over the country. Today is September 3rd, 2015, and this is Mastermind Call number 41. And I've said it several times, but uh, just a reminder, if you have a comment or you know you're going to make a question, uh, ask a question, please uh, hit star six and then one, and you'll get put in the queue for a question. Uh, Tim, anything you want to start with this week? Um, no. Other than, other than I think we all should sing happy birthday to Tim. Today happens to be his birthday, so Uh-oh. He's, he's 112 today. That's right, and and I'm counting backwards, so I'll be I'll be younger next year. Happy uh, birthday, partner. Yeah, thanks, bud. Um, no, not really. I mean, uh, we're you know we're rocking right along. We continue to make changes. We've uh, we've actually turned on several folks uh, uh, with a new their new uh, website uh, this week, and uh, so that's working out really really well. Uh, if you're interested in getting some more updated information on that. If you go online on our website, you'll note that the uh, credibility website page on our site under systems has been updated with the uh, all new website that we're now putting out. Um, and uh, we actually just uh, cranked two of them up this morning for new customers. They looked at what we've done and approved of it and they're turned on. And uh, we've done several throughout the course of this week. So that's working out well. Uh, mailings are going out. Everybody seems to be pleased, happy, and rocking and rolling. So uh, we're feeling really good about the progress that we're making, and we appreciate you guys being there, and we're continuing to uh, focus on making us better every day. And the other update, there's about six of you that have expressed a, kind of a, a premature interest in, in the divorce leads, even though we don't have the back end fully developed yet. And uh, for those six, uh, Tim, we are you, we're about two weeks into it, and uh, – we should have an answer, hopefully by the next call. Do you think, or it may take a little bit longer? Actually, I, I am I am confident that based on what I talked to our researchers about during the week, that uh, we'll have an answer for them. We should have an answer by the call next week for sure. I kind of targeted it last week for Wednesday, this next week for Wednesday, for everybody to get back and let us know what they found in their counties are the targets that you gave me. Are you still there, bud? Yeah, that was. That was weird. Somebody dinged. I don't know what that was. Oh, that was on my end. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Yep. Yeah, all I'm saying is, yeah, I think I think we'll have it by midweek next week. Okay, excellent. All right, guys. Well, uh, that is the company news. Um, there was a um, – I did get a couple requests. We promised you guys – we promised you all a monthly role play call. The last one was the first week, first Wednesday in uh, in August. I believe this one's going to be more towards the end of September. We wanted to give, we didn't want to do it without our trainer Chad, and he will be back next week. So we'll send out notices for that. It'll probably be towards the end of September rather than the the beginning of the month. But we are going to make that a regular event. The first one was great. For any of you that couldn't make it, once a month we all get together. Bring your objections, bring your fears, your trepidations, anything that you're not real comfortable with as far as conversations with these people, things that have happened to you. Bring them to these calls, and uh, we'll, we'll send that note, notice out next week and let you know what day that it, that will occur. It will be towards the end of this month. And with that, we only have one person. Hopefully he has a very long question, uh, or we're going to have a short call. If anybody else has any questions or comments, if Danielle Thames is on the call, uh, please hit star six and then hit one, and we'll go ahead and go to our first question. You are up. Hey, it's Arnie Johansson in Minneapolis. Hey, Arnie. How's it going? Excellent, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. So we sent out our first batch of uh, mailings, I think, on, well, it was on Friday and on Monday. Um, I was going to call them today. We haven't got any calls back yet. Um, I was going to call them with a slide dial today, like at 4 o'clock, because that MIT study said that's the best time to call between 4 and 6 p.m., um, and it sounds like that's what Chad does when he when he sends them out. He, he uses a slide dial, or you know, he uses the voice, you know, the recorded message. 
Um, I was just wondering, based upon other people's experience, um, it, you know, is it normal or, you know, I, I know it varies, but, like, not to get any calls back on the first batch, like, within the first few days? Tim, do you have a uh, – I mean, it, as you said, the responses are all over the place. We've literally had people take five listings in a week of sending them out, and then we've had people that have told us that, you know, didn't get any calls for a week or two, and then the phone started ringing. Another yeah. another variable there, Arnie, you really – the post office, we all know highly how highly dependable and predictable they are. Um, <laughs> if you don't really know for sure when – if and when your mail got delivered. Yeah, I mean the one thing the one thing that I would suggest that you do every time you do a mailing, if you're doing them yourself, and we do this when we do the mailings for all, all the customers that we do them for, and you know we're now doing thousands of them, you know every week, and we always mail a copy to the subscriber as well, so that they know exactly when they got delivered. That way, you know that you're following up on the on on people who have at least had a chance to see them already. Uh, also, repetition is important. Uh, you know, anyone that is in direct marketing will tell you that one mailing is not going to do it for you. You know, frequency of response, putting your putting your eye, putting their eyes on your face and your information frequently will get you significant responses every time. And we find that as well in our own marketing when we do the things that we do the first, second, third times, we're always surprised that the results sometimes are even better the second time and third time than the first time that we attempt to contact people. So it's, it's it's a numbers game, and it depends on your market. You may also find that based on n knowledge and news of what's going on in your market and what your, you know, your local news stations and your newspaper are saying in regard to financial conditions and real estate market have a great effect on what's going on with people. If they think it's a good time to sell property now out of probate or just in general, they'll be more likely to get on it sometimes and you just kind of it's like Jim said it's all over the place we have people who've had amazing results week one and we've had people who get people six months after their first letter went out that give them a call and uh you know they go and list the property and sell it Jim you've had that happen more than, more than once for sure yeah I had a letter come a year after I sent it on a on a two and a half million dollar listing in Boca Raton and they they basically sat on it for a year and finally called me so there is, there definitely is a cumulative effect, Arnie. Did you, did you include, did we do the mailing for you, Arnie, or did you do it? No, we did it. We did it ourselves, and uh, yeah. And that's fine. I was just that. curious if you had, mailing if you had myself. done as Tim. If I was just curious if you had done as Tim uh, said, did you send yourself one or no? No, that's a good idea. Though. I'll do that on the next batch. Yeah, and when you you get it, you can pretty much assume that you know most of the, the people that you sent it to received it also. Yeah, it's just a good wow. it's a good reference point. So but I mean, you know, I certainly absolutely no discouragement in that. Just go bang away at them. And the whole point of the letter is to accomplish is two things. First off, you do put yourself in front of them. Secondly, it obviously gives you a good reason to call them back. When you call them, you know, you can say, Hey, I just wanted to get in touch with you. I dropped you a letter the other day. I wanted to know if you got it, if you had any questions. I mean I'm you know how to do that sort of stuff and it's it's a door opener. It gives you that reason to call. You're not cold calling as much as you would be if you'd never sent. You're literally following up on a mailing, and and people generally are more more uh, accepting of that. Less of a cold call, exactly. Yep. You know, kind of related to that, I was hoping Danielle Thames would be on the call. Maybe she's just shy, but uh, with the Michelle Cobb team, uh, Michelle had reached out to me this morning and. She's been busy hiring new admin people and ISAs, and she's been getting our leads since June, and she has just just got her June probate leads out, her letters out. Now, now she's working on July and August, and from the June probates, which is so t really that data is three months old, uh, she set her first appointment, got a listing, and when she went on the listing appointment, she got referred to another uh, listing. So, you know, her first her first mailing, it sounds like, uh, resulted in two listings, one probate, and uh, I'm not real sure if the other one was a probate or not. I assume that it was not, but uh, so good, good job there, and it just kind of illustrates the point that um, this data has a, has a good shelf. Who else has a question? What's that? Do you have another question? Darty, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, 
um, that's that was one thing I was just thinking of. So are those probate leads that we get? Those are like fresh, like every month. Those are like brand new, pretty much files. Is that right? Correct. That, every that, that, every month you get all the probate files that were filed, all the probates that were filed in the last thirty days. Okay. So they're, they'll be anywhere from you know a day or two old to thirty days old. And occasionally, occasionally one will appear that for whatever reason the probate was filed and occasionally a judge or, or some reason a court will hold something in suspense and it will appear in your record even though it's a bit older, it's because it was not previously collected. So, you know, if you see one that doesn't appear to be in the right date order, it's because it just didn't get through the system. It could have been filed a couple of months earlier and never actually hit probate court and we don't have any way to control that. So we give you what's available new to us over that 30 day period. Got it. Um, so one thing, because I was looking at these um, these scripts, you know, the inbound probate scripts, um, and then the outbound probate scripts. Um, one thing I thought that would be helpful uh, would that that could be added to the site, and I think I brought this up last week, would be like a list of questions because you know on those role plays. Chad's really good at asking specific questions. You know, he definitely has a purpose when you're listening to those role plays. Um, he definitely has a purpose when he's, you know, going through and qualifying a lead over the phone. I think it'd be really, I mean, it's great to listen to those role plays because you kind of see it in action. We're actually like transcribing those role plays so I can have the language that he uses because some of that stuff's a little bit different from what's in these inbound scripts. Is there any way that you guys could just like put a list of like, you know, his questions on there in a PDF and then we could just take that and then when I call, I can just have that list right there and go boom, 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 just like we do with like for sale by owners and expires and things like that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly no reason we couldn't do that. When Chad returns, I think maybe uh, we'll talk about maybe transcribing some of that sort of stuff. It's pretty easy to dictate into the you know, we, we, we're able to dictate to our computers these days, so that's not a hard request at all. Nice. Okay, man. And Arnie, by the way, congratulations. You're one of the few people that I think has read every single word on the website, uh, which is, <laughs> no, no, and I don't mean that. That's, I mean, you, you ask great questions because you're really familiar with every, everything that we have to offer. And you're gonna get you're, you're gonna get the most you're gonna get the maximum benefit uh, from this program. So I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, no, I'm excited. We're we're uh, we're gonna send out our slides tonight at four, and uh, yeah, we're ready to hammer it. So um, yeah, now, no, it's I, all good. I do want to bring I do want to bring another point up, and that's this: that what you're gonna be getting when you do the slide dial is, for the most part, you're going to get. Um, you're going to get mobile phones, and that's typically what Sly delivers to. They deliver a voicemail to a mobile phone, and that's why it's done that way. Those are the calls that you know we all get to our mobile phones these days, and uh, you know we didn't. They never rang, and we're we're getting the calls and we wonder why. Well, it's because of companies like Sly that do that, and it's a great way to deliver the data. However, you need to go back once you've done that with Sly Dial. You need to go back and pull your list and see who they did contact and who they didn't because they're definitely not going to get them all. And you need to make sure that you or someone follows up personally with the rest of them. Otherwise you're missing a bunch of your people. Yeah, that's a good point. So like with all those numbers, because on each one of these leads, there's multiple numbers, um, you know, per lead because some of them might not be a, a right number. One might not be, you know, active, whatever. What we were going to do was we were just going to take each one of those numbers, input them into Sly, and then send them out. So are you saying that there's a difference between, you know, some of those are probably landlines and some of those are probably uh, cell. I mean, as, as long as we send them out with the Sly, I know not everyone is actually gets delivered, you know, because of whatever reason. What are you saying that? Um, and you'll get back, you can, Sly will tell you what they delivered and you need to work against the list, that list and compare that to the list of all of your phone numbers and all of your people. And if they didn't call them 
and they didn't deliver a message to them, then you need to call them directly because Sly is only going to do it. Here's the way they work technically. All of the all of the mobile phone companies have a an 800 number or a toll free number that you can actually dial into from anywhere in the world and leave a voice message for any subscriber in their system without their phone ever ringing. That's what they use. So they they know based on and I'll give you a little quick tech on this. They know based on what's called an NPA NXX. That's the area code and the prefix. They know whether or not that is a mobile number and that area code and prefix will tell them that. Therefore, they know that that's not only a mobile number, but it's an AT&T number. And they'll call AT&T's 800 number, and they'll input the, the area code and phone number that you gave them, and it will connect to that subscriber's, that, that subscriber's voicemail box. That only works if it's an AT&T mobile subscriber or Verizon or T-Mobile or Sprint or you know any other large carriers. If that is a regular Bell South line or a baby Bell or whoever the provider is, or more importantly, it's your cable company. A lot of people are using voice over IP with cable or uh, anything that's voice over IP. If they can't reach that voice mailbox, they don't deliver the message for you. So they charge you for what they deliver and they know it by passing it through their filter to make that work. So you've got to work against that list. They didn't deliver and make those outbound calls. Where do you guys get, or how do you guys get those phone numbers? What do you mean? On the, you know, from the probate, because we get, you know, when we get that, we got our first list. It showed us all the names and their addresses and their phone numbers. Where did you guys get those phone numbers? We get them from a bunch of different sources that we subscribe to all over the country. We use Yellow Pages. We use White Pages. We use legal databases. We have a bunch of different places we go do to try to get the best possible numbers for you. Nice. How accurate do you think those numbers are most of the time? Oh, they're completely inaccurate. We just want you to really, you know, have a hard day and we're really doing a bad job. <laughs> yeah, we, we, they're as accurate as we can possibly get. We believe they're highly accurate. And it, it's important to note that what we do is we give them to you in the order that we think that they are most accurate. The, the one that's in your uh, PR1, uh, PR phone one is typically the one that is listed for the uh, personal representative, if possible, directly based on their, their name and address. And the rest of them are other listings for that person or related listings to that person. And they will go down as far as a business uh, number for that person that they showed up for and it could be they don't even work there anymore it could also be a relative that are, is related to that number because they've got all kinds of you know we live in a data-driven world and there's lots of databases out there that will establish interesting relationships between people and that's why also when you're making those calls you need to you need to potentially say hey i'm trying to reach xyz you know whoever that person is i'm trying to reach uh you know tom jackson and uh, I don't know if, if that's you or not, and I'm really trying to reach him in regard to the estate of so-and-so, if you're making that call directly. Now, if you get their cell phone number, you don't need to worry about that as much because it's probably them and you're good to go. So slide dial, you don't have to worry about that. You can make that more generic. But if you're calling them and you're starting to dial down that tree a little bit of the numbers that we give you, you need to basically do everything you can to take the curse off of that call by letting them know that you're calling about the estate and you're aware that it may not be the exact person you're looking for. Okay. And the same thing, Arnie, I had, when I, when I went over the script with you, I found out the, the hard way that, you know, if you're going to voice cast to five numbers per person, well, a couple of those numbers aren't going to be good. So the first time I did the voice cast, I had like 50 people call me back right away and say, I don't know who that is. I never heard of that person. Did I inherit something? Did I win the lottery? <laughs> so I changed my message a little bit to, hey, my name is Jim. I noticed that um, uh, I believe from, you know, from my records that you are the administrator or the executor of an estate uh, of, in Florida. If, if I reach the wrong number, no need to call me back. If, if you do have real estate in Florida that you're looking to sell, give me a call. And I found as soon as I did that, then all the people that felt it necessary to call me back and tell me I had the wrong number didn't bother. So it just, it just saved a lot of time. 
And 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 I think I shared with this, this with you also, Arnie. You want to drive the phone numbers to a cell phone where you can, um, you know, listen to them all. If you get 30, 40, 50 calls back at once, you want to listen to them all and then prioritize which ones you want to call back first. You know, so you don't end up, you know, talking to a lot of people that you don't need to talk to. So. With the technology, you know, you are going to get responses that, that don't apply, but if you can screen them and not waste time talking to them, that's the ideal time to do it. Well, this is the Arnie Show today, guys. Is there, we got about five or six minutes left, and Arnie, we really appreciate it. You ask great questions, and you're, you're familiar with the material. I'm sure other people had similar questions. Is there anybody else that, that um, hit star six and, and then one? Anybody else that has a question, issue, comment? Anything they need help with? I know we got a lot of new people on this call. We got a lot of enthusiastic people. I know Enid, you're on the call. You always have questions. If you have anything you want to share, hit star six and one. Um, anybody? Okay, we got a taker. Thank you. Hang on. All right, who's up? Hey guys, this is Daniel. Ask you, first time caller. Excellent. You're supposed to say long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Daniel. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I was curious, um, typically once the, the new leads go out, how how long has the person been deceased at that point? Yeah, that's a great question. On average, and Tim can back me up on this, I believe it's 60 to 90 days. Is that is that pretty accurate, Tim? It, yeah, but, you know, it, again, just like everything else, I, I would qualify that by saying, it depends on the court and it depends on the filing regulations in that particular jurisdiction. Some courts and some states require stuff to happen sooner rather than later. And there are indeed some states where the issuance of a death certificate starts a process that, you know, does some legal inquiry and makes it happen sooner. Some states it's not that way. Some states there, there aren't requirements because they can sit on it for a long, long time, and particularly if there's not a lot of stuff to do or, uh, you know, there's no pressure to file that probate and nobody's mm -hmm. looking for money or anything else. So it's kind of hard to say, but generally a rule of thumb is what Jim said. I just don't want to – don't take that as a given. And well, well – Go ahead, Daniel. Um, you know, I totally understand that. So it, it, would you err to the side of it being longer than 90 days or err to the side of it being less? And the, and the reason I'm asking is, you know, that that, <laughs> that initial conversation, if it was just, you know, a few days past um, the script, maybe quite different. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. And I think, I think part of the problem is that, you know, you may, you may be inappropriately assuming that that person that you're talking to, who's been appointed as the personal representative, is is always one of the errors is always related to the person that died or anything else and i think in in my opinion and most of our opinions the thing you need to approach this with is in a very business-like manner and if you find out you know one of the questions you may ask as a qualifying question is you know is is sally uh you know if you're the personal representative for sally jones uh you know was sally related to you what was your relationship with sally if you find out that you know that's my mom well, I'm really, really sorry to hear that. And if you, if not, you know, oftentimes that person is a, you know, just a relative that got kind of stuck with the problem to deal with it. And it's again, all over the board. I think you don't worry too much about whether the person, you know, how long they've been deceased. I'd say, you know, I'm anxious to do it. And quite honestly, if it's been filed, everybody's aware of it. And the sooner you get to them, you know, that's the best you can do. And you can say, I don't know, you know, how long ago this happened or anything else, but you can look at your lead to make that determination, and I'd get right on it. I wouldn't worry about it. And to follow up on that a little bit more, we had a uh, one of our clients got their first set of leads, and three of them had deaths that occurred like one year, three years, and ten years ago. And mm -hmm. she had asked us, are you getting bad data? We said, no, typically that's probably a state where you're not required to file it right away, and they, they probably had a relative – you know, who who was living in the house for free and now has decided to sell the house, so they had to file the probate. Right. <laughs> so it, but it is a good mm -hmm. indication. Those are still leads you want to work because the fact that the pi probate was finally filed is a really good indication that somebody wants to sell that property or they wouldn't have bothered. Mm -hmm. Good answer. And yeah. it, also, it also brings up another interesting point. One of the things that people, people, you can help folks with when you make this call 
you may find that exactly what Jim described is actually happening, and they don't want it to be that way. You know, somebody is camped out in the house, and they really do need to move because the will of that person has expressed they need to get that house sold. And sometimes, uh, like a, and we've seen this happen numerous times, where the the a sibling, I mean, a, a child of a parent is living in the home with a parent, and they've kind of, you know, moved back in or whatever, whether they were taking care of them or not. The, the parent passes away, and now the child is in that home, but there are four other siblings in the family, and, you know, they're reluctant to do anything to get the, the kid out, the other kid out, and unfortunately, one of the things you can do is sort of help with that process by saying, well, you know, you don't have to wait till probate closes to sell the house, and this is a great time to do it. If, if the will uh, says that the house needs to get sold and divided up, let's talk about what your options are, and it's a great way to have that conversation. And then you become that mediator, that friendly person. You can sit down with all of them and maybe you work out a deal that gives, you know, they, they agree to offer some relocation assistance to the person living in the house. And you can suggest all those kinds of things to them as their advisor. Now you're not just a realtor. You're actually an advisor and you're demonstrating your expertise. Great answer. Tim, we had a very patient person that was trying to ask a question, area code 713. Hey, guys, if I didn't say it, you, you have to hit star six, and then you have to hit one. If you just hit star six, you won't be put in the queue. You have to hit star six and then one. But area code 713, I unmuted you. You've been trying to ask a question. Go ahead. Oh, it's Enid. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> My question is actually about the mailing. Um, about the mailings? One, yes. Okay. Once you send, I want to know if anybody has been successful sending other things besides letters, uh, maybe using postcards or any other type of communication. I'll, I'll, I'll take that, Jim. I mean, sure. we, we send the letters out in it for a specific reason. It, we want to make sure that they get opened. Uh, I am not aware, and we've not, of, of, you know, Jim, I think when we started this call said this is our 40-something uh, week of doing this, and we have yet to have anyone say anything about sending postcards out. If you wanted to send something different out, there are a couple of things that I might suggest, and one of them might be as a follow-up to that initial conversation, you might want to send out a, a brochure of some sort that really details all the services that you can provide in a little more detail, but that first contact, a, a professionally written letter, is really the best thing that you can put out there for them, at least in our opinion. Yeah, no, no, I agree with that. What I'm saying is I think one of the comments that Jim said is that you need to pound them and you need to send more information and you cannot just send one letter and, and expect that you're going to get the lead. So what I was thinking if you send several letters, let's say you send three letters, and then maybe follow up if somebody has a system that are that is doing something else. That's that's what I present. I understand the letter and I have it. You know, I send it to you. So um, I think that's very important. If anybody else has had any thing else work, hit star six and then hit one. Um, yeah. Well, if you're waiting for that, the, and, and, yep. and you're saying the right thing. I mean, obviously you know, you're sending a series of letters out. You're sending three letters over a, a three-month time frame and you're following each of those up with a phone call. And that's our basic approach. Adding anything to that that you can add certainly isn't going to hurt anything that you're doing. And repetition builds familiarity. In this business, there's nothing that, you know, is more important than being top of mind. And the other thing to remember is that while you're, you're trying to work this as probate, the other part of this, and, and we're going to start doing some stuff in the letters, and you'll, because you're getting these anyway, we're going to give you some options. The, the second and third letters that are going out, in addition to focusing on probate, we may want to change them up so that they focus more on the other potential services that you can offer and ask if, if, it, if they have any other real estate that needs to be sold or they're aware of anyone who does need to get some help with real estate so you can get more than just one bang for that so you're prospecting for other things as well. That's great. I talked to one of your one of the clients and he said he actually sent six letters in six wow. weeks. Every week for six weeks. Yep. And and so that's interesting. 
yeah one a week is one a week is a lot um you know and it gets expensive and all that and the truth of it is that if somebody's sending six letters out it i don't know if you you might ask him if he's following each one of those up with a phone call that's a lot of a lot of banging at him and potentially might be overkill i'm not going to say it doesn't work because i'm not talking to him but i think maybe uh you know if you're doing it uh, you know at, at most every couple of weeks or whatever um, no, that's about the frequency we'd recommend doing much more than that. We we do it once a month in general. We do have people we are mailing for every two weeks, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. And we've got people that we're mailing more than three out for, and that's what they're trying to go do. So, um, you know, it's really kind of you're going to have to feel your way through it and feel it, feel it in your market. Guys, we are out of time today. Thanks to the, uh, the two of you that did participate. Um, I always end these calls by saying, you know, take one idea that you learned today or someone who inspired you and go put those ideas into practice and go out and have a success story. Come back next week and share it with us. Thank you so much for showing up today, guys. Make it a great week. Take care.